Physiology video series. Uh, I am Mr. Grippa, your anatomy teacher here at West Claremont High School, room 227. And the next video in our series is going to be on the cat muscles. So if you are a cat lover, you may want to turn the video off right now and go on to the next video in your suggested feed. If you're in class and you're wanting to use this to study for your upcoming cat practical on the muscles, then stay tuned. So now is your chance. We, this is your official warning, graphic cat dissection footage coming up. So here I have a few examples that uh, we're going to study the muscles. We'll go in two muscle groups. First will be the muscles of the upper torso, upper body and torso. And then the next video uh, will go with the muscles in the hindquarters. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, here we go. We've changed the view. Uh, hopefully we will be able to see the muscles a little better from this angle. Um, let's get started. So the muscles that we want to look at first, we'll be dealing with the upper torso and upper body and the torso. So let's go ahead and get started here. I have a few uh, good representatives from one class. So hopefully we'll be able to see uh, the muscles that are in question. So let's start up with the muscles around the head and neck. So one of the first muscles that we have to do, this is why we skin around the face, uh, is the masseter. And I'll try to show this on both cameras. Uh, the masseter is the muscle that allows the cat to masticate its food, and it's the jaw muscle. And it is located right here. Uh, let's see if we have a different version. On this cat, we can see that it is right here. It's kind of covered in a, a pale fascia, and that is the masseter. Uh, the other muscle that we want to look at is the sternomastoid. Now this one can be tricky. As you can see, they cut a portion of the tissue away so that they can access the major blood vessels to embalm and inject the colored dye into the cardiovascular system. So a lot of times the sternomastoid is damaged because of that, but you can see on this side, we can see a piece of that muscle, which is right here, makes a V that heads up to the back of the skull. It's underneath some of this connective tissue and the glands that are in the neck. So this part is the sternomastoid. And on the smaller cat over here, see if we can get a look at this guy. Uh, it is right, here's a pretty good view. You can see that muscle is right here and it will go up to the back of the skull. So this muscle is the sternomastoid. Now let's talk about some of the muscles on the shoulder and arm, back of the neck. Okay, if we put tension on the muscles, we can see that there's a faint line that goes right across the point of the shoulder. That is the divider line between the muscle that goes from the back of the neck to the point of the shoulder that is called the clavotrapezius and then from this point on down over the point of the shoulder this is known as the clavobrachialis so again we're clavotrapezius and clavobrachialis hopefully we can see this faint line that goes across the point of the shoulder on this cat um, we can probably we'll try to look on different examples here. So on this cat, we can see it as well. Here's the clavotrapezius. There is that faint line. And then this would be the clavobrachialis. Also on the arm, which is very similar to the human musculature, we have on the back of the forelimb, we have the triceps brachii. That would be that muscle here. And while we're back here, we'll talk about the large muscle in the back. This is, and you kind of see a piece of it is removed. Uh, someone wasn't very careful in their skinning techniques. I guess there is more than one way to skin a cat. Um, this way was probably not the best. So this large muscle here on the back would be the latissimus dorsi. And we'll check the other side, see if there's one that's better. As you see there, a piece of it has been removed. So we'll go to this big tomcat here and we see 
a section of latissimus dorsi, which is right here, and they had a little piece of it removed as well. So this large muscle here in the back would be the latissimus dorsi. Let's check the little cat over here. It too also has the latissimus with some damage right there on the side, and that side is not much better, all right? But that looks like that's gonna be about the best we can do. So this large muscle here would be the latissimus dorsi going from the spine all the way up to the armpit. And while we're back here, we'll talk about some more. Uh, this one has been cleared away pretty well. So here we see this line that separates the latissimus from this triangular muscle right here. And this muscle is called the spinotrapezius. That'll take us up to the muscle that covers the shoulder blade, also known as the scapula. Some of you may remember from the skeletal system, there was a process on the scapula called the acromion process. So that may help you to remember that this muscle is known as the acromiotrapezius. And then if we lay the cat on the side, we put some tension on the muscle, we can see this football shaped muscle right here. And that is known as the spinodeltoid. We'll take a look on a different cat, see if we can see a better or cleaner example of the spinodeltoid on this little one here. Uh, we can kind of see spinodeltoid right there. And we'll check out this larger cat. Uh, it too has a pretty well concealed spinodeltoid, but we can put tension on it and see it pretty well. So it is, let me check the other camera. It is this muscle right here. Don't know if we can see that very well on this muscle that comes across right there. Makes I always call that the football shaped muscle. All right. So again, we have the latissimus dorsi here on the side, which takes us to the musculature on the back. That's the spinotrapezius covering the uh, shoulder blade or scapula is a chromiotrapezius and then the football shaped muscle right here is spinodeltoid. Then we go to the back of the neck. This is the clavotrapezius to the point of the shoulder. Here we see the faint line and then we have the clavobrachialis. Okay, so let's go over those one more time. All right, so we go latissimus dorsi, we go spinotrapezius, acromiotrapezius, clavotrapezius to the clavicle, and then across the point of the shoulder is clavobrachialis. The football shaped muscle is the spinodeltoid. Here at the jaw, we have the masseter, and at the neck, going from the base of the neck up to the back of the skull, we have the sternomastoid. Now let's talk about the pectoralis muscles, the muscles in the chest. Um, these are typically the muscles that are severely damaged and lost during the cat skinning. When you skin the cat, they really want to go with it. So this cat has half of all the muscles we need, and hopefully it will be a good enough example to explain what we're looking for. So there are four muscles here in the chest that we're looking at. This one that goes straight across the chest, we can see in the other camera good. This one that goes across the chest here, it's only about as wide as my pinky. That is called the pectoantebrachialis, and it lies on top of the pectoralis major. So this muscle that is above goes from here to there. And again, it makes this triangle down underneath. This is the pectoralis major. So pectoantebrachialis, pectoralis major. Then we notice the fibers of the muscle go from this angle to this steeper angle. So we have uh, this clear divider line that separates pectoralis major from pectoralis minor. And then the bottom of the V usually making a darker muscle. And we can see the divider line between those two right here is pectoralis minor. And then the bottom of the V is the xiphohumeralis. And if you're looking at your sheet, that is the muscle that starts with the X. So the same way you would pronounce the xylophone, this is the xiphohumeralis. So again, those four are pectoantebrachialis, pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, and then pecto, uh, excuse me, xiphohumeralis. And on this side, we can see that the xiphohumeralis is gone, should be right here. Here we see a little tab of the muscle that's left, 
but this side we can see it. And on a cat that's done that skin well, there would be another muscle over here, and I always call that the xiphohumeralis is the bottom of the V, and it usually makes a darker muscle, it makes that V down at the bottom of those chest muscles. All right, so that takes us to the abdominal wall, okay, the large. Uh, area of muscle mass that covers the side of the abdominal wall would be the external oblique and that's all of this muscle here. We roll the cat over and we look at the front of the abdominal wall, the anterior, this would be your six-pack abs area, that would be the rectus abdominis. Let's turn it this way so it's not upside down I guess. Alright, so again we have external oblique, we have the rectus abdominis, and then the easiest place to find the transverse abdominus would be to come down here and this cat has not had that cleared yet and we come, we'll check this cat, this, this one has a pretty good example if we look at this guy if we were to take the time and peel you can see the color change right here where it breaks and we look down here in the corner we see abdominal muscle going straight across in a transverse plane kind of direction that would be the transverse abdominus and what I can do if given some more time I can trim here and peel the external oblique away and that would allow me to expose another layer of abdominal wall and that muscle would be the transverse abdominus All right, and that just takes a little bit of time and we can peel that external oblique back and see the transverse abdominus. But you can tell when you look at the external oblique here, if you can see it, don't know if we can see it close enough and enough focus, but the muscle fibers run at an angle, so they're considered oblique, and they're on the ex outside, so it's external. And then down here, the muscle fibers run straight across, so that is transverse abdominus. And I believe that should take care of all of the muscles of the upper body and the torso. All right, so real fast, if we want to review it one more time, we have latissimus dorsi, external oblique. We have down here, we have transverse abdominus right there. We can see it again right here. Uh, we go to the back. So again, latissimus dorsi, the spinotrapezius, acromiotrapezius, the football shape is the spinodeltoid, triceps brachii, clavotrapezius, clavo, let me turn it for a little easier to see, clavotrapezius, clavobrachialis, sternomastoid is in the neck, masseter is the jaw, and then we come back to the chest, and we'll start at the bottom, the xiphohumeralis, the xiphohumeralis, pectoralis minor, pectoralis major, and pectoantibrachialis. All right, whoops, just, just noticed that wasn't on camera very well. We'll do that again. So it's the xiphohumeralis, pectoralis minor, pectoralis major, and then the one that goes straight across is pectoantibrachialis. So hopefully with the two different cameras going, uh, we have enough footage to cover those muscles, okay? All right, that concludes the muscles of the upper body and torso. So hopefully that will help you do well on your upcoming cat muscle lab practical.